most education systems, particularly a lot of public education systems, um, you know, are going to lose the battle behind private education systems if they don't adopt the technology and teach students how to use it, how to use it safely, how to use it properly, how to actually, you know, use it as like a, a, a way to elevate your work. Um, and if you want, uh, you know, I don't know, I, I think that there's pluses and minuses to it, but if you want to prepare students for the future, it certainly is a future where I don't think, you know, I think chat GPT is here to stay and any amalgamations of that is here to stay. And I have just a lot of concerns about um, the, the widening gap between economically disadvantaged kids and those who are more advantaged being taught different things in their schools. Uh, well, I definitely think you're right in that. And by the way, chat GPT, I found it's, it's phenomenal. It's so much better than Google, right? It comes up mm -hmm. with all sorts of questions or thoughts or things that you can't gain in one sitting because you actually have to, it gives you the research on Google, but you have to go into it and read it in chat mm -hmm. GPT. You can ask a question and it does all the research for you and contains it in one area. It's up to you to know how to fact check and, you know, understand a bigger picture and a broader picture, but it does condense everything. And it gives you so much information that you may have missed if you aren't a good researcher. Um, but I remember the days of being in high school and you, there were so many elements of writing a paper. You had to research it. You had to know how to write English properly. Yes. You had to know how to put it all together. You don't necessarily have to know all those skills now. And I guess you don't really need to use them. You, you don't need to learn it if, if it's going to be done for us anyway and helpful as long as the information is there. And you're right. I mean, there are a lot of um, kids or, you know, uh, schools that are not giving enough information and it's so much better to be given the opportunity to have a leg up in it. So, I mean, I do find it, the whole thing is fascinating, but um, you know, are you, we're living, we're living in a large social experiment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. But like, are you concerned that like what these guys from the social dilemma said, they took it to a new level. Like that whole um, documentary was more about the addiction to social media and the algorithms and how they're kind of the big brother of following you. And that's a whole, you know, that's a whole conversation on one side, but then to take it to another level where it could take over what we're doing, take over jobs, take over um, people's brains, so to speak, like we were talking about, but in a way of like, oh, you know, ruling things and having a mind of its own. So people are no longer in charge. Like that was where the conversation was going for them. Do you see that as a fear? I mean, I, I saw the talk that the guys from center for humane studies did on, on YouTube. I thought it was brilliant. And uh, I definitely think that there's a whole group of Silicon Valley tech people who are not, who are not being cautious enough about how they develop these tools and they're sort of developing them in a black box. They have, I mean, I can't tell you how many AI engineers I've spoken to who, are, who wake up incredibly excited and also terrified because they don't really understand why the, you know, how, how these AI tools are, are thinking and learning. And so imagine developing something without really understanding how it's doing what it's doing. You, it's very hard to see the future. It's very hard to see how this could be manipulated. Um, and they're trying to do their best at putting all the safeguards in place. But I, I, I share a lot of those sort of larger existential concerns. Mm -hmm. I think um, for the average person, the biggest, for, for just, you know, the, the, for, for the average person, I would say the biggest concern in the next three years is will AI take my job? Yeah. Um, yeah. And quite frankly, the only path I see um, around that, at least for now, is encouraging people to educate themselves on how to use these tools. Mm. Um, because there's already a huge job market opening up for anyone who has AI skill sets, right. um, from prompting to engineering, just understanding how any department at any company might integrate with these tools to elevate the department. Um, right. And so there's no doubt about it. It's going to change every aspect of our life and business as we know it. Um, the existential questions, which are super important, I don't think we'll, we'll I don't know how we'll even, I don't know how we'll, uh, I suppose, assess 
how, how real they are for at least another few years. <laughs>